One of the necessary evils of aircraft ownership is dragging it to the avionics shop for its two-year pitot static and transponder certification. There's a victim right here. It's a twin-engine, non-pressurized, turbocharged airplane. Probably spends a lot of time up in the teens, all kinds of weather. Well, here's how we do it and why we do it. Well, one reason for doing pitot static and transponder tests is because the FAA regulations require it every 24 calendar months. In case you need some review, it's FAR 91411, which covers the altimeter system, altitude reporting, as well as the static system. And then there's 91413, which handles ATC transponder tests. Now, if you fly VFR and IFR, it's both regulations you need to be concerned with. If you just operate VFR, you only need to comply with the transponder tests. But regardless of how you operate, it's a good idea to comply with both inspections. It's also a good idea to have a thorough understanding of the pitot static system for any aircraft that you pilot. And so goes the average personal airplane, which doesn't have an overly complicated static system, which usually consists of three instruments, a pitot tube, static ports, and various pieces of static line and related plumbing. Now, that's where things can go bad. As aircraft age, those lines tend to get brittle, fittings can break, and then you've got static system leakage. That's why it's important to have a thorough inspection accomplished every 24 calendar months. Now it's rumored that pitot static certifications don't apply to glass cockpit airplanes. Now forget that rumor, it's just not true. Glass cockpit airplanes still have pitot and static systems and transponders, so they still need to be certified per FAR 91411 and 413 just like steam gauge airplanes do. Now despite the simplicity of the pitot static system found in most non-pressurized airplanes, there's still a lot that can go wrong requiring serious amounts of disassembly of the aircraft instrument panel and interior components too. It's important to bring the aircraft to a shop who has technicians versed in pitot static system repair. Here's XL Avionics Stephen Cristino who's seen more pitot static systems than he cares to remember. He's got the process down to a science. The first thing you look for is the pitot pressure at the pitot tube itself. So we plumb directly into the pitot tube to establish whether or not the pitot system itself has a leak. I've already connected to the pitot tube. Now what I have to do here is close off the cross bleed which connects the static system to the pitot system so I can apply pressure to the airspeed system. I then begin to bring up the airspeed system to about anywhere between 140 and 160 knots. And what I'm looking for here now is the bleed off of the pitot system. Now I hope to see none, but some, occasionally you'll see a few knots. But you're allowed five knots every minute. It seems to be this is going to be okay. And uh, we can go ahead and cross it off after, cross bleed it off and it'll bleed back down. Notice that the static system, the altimeter, went down. That tells you that there's no, no uh, leakage in the static system itself. A critical portion of the test includes testing accuracy of the aircraft's altimeter. When we approach 20,000 feet, I need to check for friction. I tie off the 20,000, take a reading of my altimeter, tap it, and subtract the difference. We have about 80 feet of friction. Checking the transponder is the easy part of the test. We're checking functions like squat code entry, the accuracy of the mode C altitude reporting, and other functions like the IDENT, transmit power, and frequency of the transponder. Now there's far more to a pitot static certification than we cover here, and in general the test takes about four hours on a basic aircraft. And like anything else, as the complexity of the aircraft increases, so does the complexity of the pitot static system.
You can learn more about pitot static certifications by reading the launch issue of Avionics Direct. It's a new shop publication from the folks here at XL. It's on their website, xlavionics.com. I'm Larry Anglosano. Thanks for watching.